what is up it's y'all it's okay P here with you right now we're going to check some trail cameras out here at my aunt and uncle's uh she was just outside and she took a couple pictures on her regular camera of some really nice bucks i want to know if i've got them on camera where they was at they have to know i have a corn pile so we ended up did check that trail camera wasn't nothing on that trail camera it's actually day after that um i didn't ever get to finish that video because it got really dark by the time we got back to the house it was i mean it was pitch black outside but uh yeah so there wasn't anything on that camera i do have the pictures that she sent me and they will be at the end of this video um i will post them on there that way y'all can see what she did see um it was a pretty decent deer, uh, probably nothing that I will shoot myself, but the fiance, she still ain't got a buck under her belt, so definitely if one of them come out, for sure I'm going to tell her to smoke him like a freight train. Uh, there's no reason for me to kill it because I've killed a couple of the deer like that. Uh, to finish this video, I do want to do a little... Uh, well, what, how could I word this? But, uh, what's in my arsenal, I could say. That would be a good wording for it. Um, and I'll have all, I'll bring all these out here in just a second. But, to go through it real fast, I have a 7mm 08 right now as my deer rifle. I've got a 835 Mossberg 12 gauge, shoot three and a half for the turkeys. I've got a Thompson Center 50 caliber muzzleloader. I don't know the uh, little the name of the gun, like what they normally have. Like you got the Remington 770s and all that. Uh, I don't know which model it is, but I do have it. Um, and I also have a 12 gauge Browning shotgun slug gun for when I go to Illinois. So y'all will see that in a later video. I don't keep that one at my house because it is a pretty nice gun and I want to keep it in a safe. So it is in a safe somewhere. At, an, at another person's house um but yeah uh and then i've got of course i've got my bows i've got my bear i've got a crossbow it's not in commission right now string popped off of it i'm hoping to maybe trade it to something here pretty soon uh because i don't shoot crossbow uh, i bought it to hunt with because you know i couldn't hit nothing with my bow i was like well i could still say i killed something with an archery weapon and granted I could have took it out and hunted with it before it messed up and all that, but I just never really wanted to do that. I just never really got into the crossbow hunt, and I know a lot of people that do. I, I've sighted in a bunch of crossbows, and then in probably tomorrow's video or the next day, you'll see me sighting in a buddy of mine's crossbow. Uh, I'm all right at it. I sighted in one guy's crossbow. He killed a little doe with it. Not a little doe. I mean, she's a big old fat doe. But and uh, his was the easiest I've ever sighted in. He bought his brand new and straight out of the box. I mean, when I say it come shooting probably five inches short or low, right out of the box, perfect left and right, just shooting five inches low. And that's what it said on the box was it would be five inches low. You would have to adjust your height. Left and right should be right. Uh, and I said okay. And honestly, I didn't think nothing about it. And I got him sighted in, and then since then I've had a couple other people have me sighted in their crossbows. Uh, but, you know, it's just another thing that I've done my whole life is sight in stuff. So it comes a little natural to me. But, uh, yeah, so I'm going to go grab these guns, and I'll show you, show you about them, show you the scopes on them, because I can't remember all them scopes off the top of my head. And I'll show, I'll show you a better, better view of my bow. Uh, the fiancé, she has a diamond bow. Uh, compound bow and then she shoots my 7 millimeter 08 because the past couple years I've not or well last year I didn't use it and then the year before that uh, I did use it I killed a 10 point with it uh, but last year I didn't use it I think she went hunting with it maybe once but uh, last year we just didn't have nothing on camera for her to go hunt during rifle season uh, we sat a couple days but didn't see nothing and then she did finally get it done with the muzzleloader, which y'all seen in an earlier video. Uh, but 
I will go grab them guns and show y'all what I got. Alright guys, so the first gun that we are going to start off with is my muzzleloader. This is a Thompson Center 50 caliber muzzleloader. It's got a Bushnell scope on it. Absolutely, I love this gun. It, I actually never got to kill anything with it, but I really do like this gun. It's a Thompson Center Impact is what it is. I had one of our, old, our local gun shops order it for me about two years back, I think, is what it, when it was. Two or three years back, I had them order it for me, and I love it. I've target shot it, but I've not got to kill anything with it yet. It does have the ramrod right here. You pull it out, and that's what you shove all your powders and stuff in. I shoot two powders, and then my bullet. I can't remember what grain bullet I shoot right off the top of my head. I have to look. Um, I do know I shoot, uh, I think they're Winchester uh, primers out of it. Uh, the big thing that sold me on this gun, and this is, and I'll show you a good up close look of it. And I, this gun is unloaded; it don't have nothing in it. But this thing right here, this is where you put your primer in, and it's waterproof. Um, the way they've made it is to where no water can get in there. On most, some of your muzzleloaders, this ain't got a tight seal around it. This thing's actually kind of hard to break down. It don't kick real hard. I do like that about it. But you put your hands right here on these little wings. I don't know if you can see that real well. There's little wings right here. And you gotta just kind of pull it back and then bend. And then, let me get it to where y'all can see. That right there is where your primer goes. This is the muzzleloader that I have, and I like it a lot. Uh, I've, like I said, I've not got to kill anything with it. But I do like this gun for the price that I pay for it, which wasn't outrageous at all. The stand it is sitting on is my Codwell uh, Deadshot Field Pod Max. Um, I like this thing. I actually bought this from my uncle uh, back a couple years ago, especially just for Illinois. The whole reason I bought it. But uh, for Jenna, it's really good because she don't have to hold the weight of the guns. It holds it for you. The only thing you gotta do is put it up against your uh, shoulder real good and hold down right here. It's really good. Uh, for that, my Bushnell scope I have on it used to be on my 270 I used to have uh, when I traded it in for the gun I'm going to show you here in a minute. They actually let me keep my scope, so I was pretty excited about that. Um, and I got a new scope on. I got another scope on that gun that um, I've had for a long time that I didn't have nothing to put it on. Um, I will go ahead and tell you about the one gun that I don't have at my house, and that is my Browning 12 gauge slug gun. It's got a Nikon Pro Staff uh, 7, I believe, scope on it. Um, 9 by 3 by 50, I think, is the dimensions on that scope. Uh, for up there, you really want the 50 um, scopes on it because it can absorb so much light, and up there, it's pretty much flat, so you're hunting in fields, so you really can take advantage of that uh, 30 minutes before daylight and 30 minutes after daylight of still legal shooting light. This scope that's on this is a 3 by 9 by 40 um, It's a good scope for around this area for the simple fact of a lot of your times you're hunting, you're in the woods here in Kentucky. Uh, but moving on from this gun, we'll go to my shotgun, my turkey gun. And my turkey gun is a Mossberg uh, 835. It's unloaded also. Um, it shoots two and three quarters, three and a halfs, and three inch shells. It's got a 24 inch barrel, which when I was younger, I thought that was a really long gun. Um, but now that I've got older, um, it's not that long. This used to be my dad's gun. As you can tell, it's got the really old camo on it. Pump action. You got your safety right here. Um, I like this safety because uh, it is a little, little more stealthy to be able to click it off. Um, I've shot many turkeys with this. I shot a couple coyotes with it this year. Um, and uh, the longest shot I've taken with this with a three and a half is about 80 steps. Uh, my dad shot one, a Jake, one time longer than that. Uh, I think it was one of the last birds he actually shot with this gun before he gave it to me. Um, and I couldn't tell you how long, it was, how long that shot was because I was about... 13, between 12 and 13 at that time, so that's 
been a little, little bit for me. Uh, but I do love this gun. I don't ever plan on getting rid of it. I do plan on getting a new turkey gun for me, and then I'm going to get Jenna a 20-gauge pump. Uh, this gun's just a little bit too heavy for her, too long for her, for her stature. Uh, I'm going to get her a gun that uh, more suits her. And she might want a 12-gauge, 12, 12 and we'll find her a 12-gauge up there right, not this one, because this one's way too long. And uh, she'll never shoot three and a halves out of it. Uh, I've shot a few threes out of it. Never really like the three inch pattern that this gun shoots. It's got the stock choke in it. Um, so it doesn't have any new things except for your reticles to look through. Um, I did put some, uh, they're kind of like neon, so you can see them a little better. Uh, I, and I love this gun to pieces. Uh, I'm not sure on what my next turkey gun will be. I don't know if it'll be a Remington or, or if I'll stick with the Mossberg brand. Um, I'm really thinking about a Super Black Eagle 3 or a Super Black Eagle 2. I fell, I shot one, and I fell in love with it. Uh, that that probably will be my next shotgun. No, nope, no, I'm not going to lie. Uh, then we'll, now we'll move on to my, right, my deer rifle. Now, my deer rifle, it might be a little dirty. Uh, I used it coyote hunting here not too long ago, and I kind of failed. So, it might have a little bit of mud on it, but that's okay. It gives it character. Uh, what I've got here is a Thompson Center uh, 7mm 08. I bought this gun. Actually, I didn't go in there to buy this gun. I went in there to trade my 270 in for a 308. Um, and I was going to give a little extra money for it. Um, but, it didn't happen that way. They didn't have a 308. I was a little, I was a little bummed, because that's what I wanted, was a 308. And, I got to thinking, you know, while I was there, I want a gun that Jenna can shoot, and I can shoot, and it still have the knockdown power that I'm looking for. A 308 would have, would kick hard. Harder. Um... I just got to think, I got talking to the guys there, and I've known them my whole life, so uh, they understand, you know, what, what I'm looking for when I do go in there. Um, and they set me up with this gun, and they said, you know, it's not a big, a big gun that you see out there a lot. Shells are easy to find, but they're like, you know, you don't see a lot of people deer hunting with this. Uh, they use it a lot for coyote hunting, but deer hunting wise, you know, you don't see a lot of people use, using this gun for that. Uh, but they said, it has the knockdown power you're wanting. It just don't have the recoil. And I was like, okay. They took me out back, let me shoot it a couple of times. Shot good. And I was like, heck yeah. You know, like this is awesome. And uh, I said, so, you know, what kind of deal can we make? And we ended up making a pretty decent deal that I couldn't pass up. And here I am, I've got it. And I will, this gun will stay with me until, until my son gets it or my daughter or, you know, Something like that. I do have a Nikon. It's a Buckmaster scope on it. I love this scope. Uh, this scope was actually on my squirrel hunting gun, which I actually sold uh, been about a year ago. I sold it to pay for a hunting trip. Yeah, I sold a gun to pay for a hunting trip. You know, It, it was a win-win, but then it was a lose-lose at the same time. Because I love that gun. But, uh, yeah, so I actually got to keep my scope off of it. And I was like, you know, I'll put it on my 270 because that's what I had at the time. Or I'll, put it, I'll find something to put it on, you know. No big deal. And I, I stuck that sucker on my 270. And it, I mean, I shot it good and I took it off my 270. And I got that bush nail. I put that bush nail on the 270 because for some reason this scope, it just didn't feel right on there. And I just had that scope sitting up in the closet. And uh, I was. You know, I was just messing around with that 270 with the bush nail. Then I bought the muzzle loader, and I took the bush nail off the 270 and put it on the muzzle loader because I wanted to kill something with that muzzle loader that year. And uh, that year, I just decided I wanted a new gun, so I took that 270 out there and I traded it off. And I'd actually put this scope back on the 270 between the time I decided to take the bush nail off the 270 and take it to the gun shop, but uh, I decided, you know, it's time for something new, and my first thing when I walked in there, I said, I want to keep my scope, so I, they let me keep my scope, 
I did have to pay a little more for that uh, because it did take a lot of value out of the gun. Um, but it's no big deal. Uh, but I got this gun. I've shot a 125-inch 10-pointer. Uh, it's the only deer that I've shot with this gun. Take that back. I shot a six-pointer. That and that was that was just a big mistake. I had two deer in the field, and one of them was the buck that I was after, and they kept switch swapping in the field. The field was real grown up, and whenever I seen one get out to where I could shoot it, I picked the wrong one. But uh, that's the only only two deer I've shot with this gun. Jenna didn't get to kill anything with it last year. Uh, it just it didn't work out to where I could get her out in the stand to hunt with it, but. I do love this gun, and I do plan to keep it for a really long time. We'll move on, and I'll get this out of the way. That way we can get a little better view of the bows. We'll move on to the bows, and uh, first I'm going to show you Jenna's bow. So this is my fiance's bow. It's the pink camouflage. It's got a octane stabilizer on it. It's got a diamond archery factory uh, wristlet right there. It's got the uh, apex gear sight on it, and it's just got just your standard what comes on your diamond bows from Cabela's rest on it. This is a diamond. It don't say what kind of diamond it is. But this is hers. Um, it's got a little spider webs in it where, you know, it's been up for a while. One thing I do want to change on this is it's got the uh, cord for your peep sight to pull it straight. I do want to get her a free floating peep sight that always stays straight. She shoots a True Fire release. I bought this for her last year. I bought this bow for her last year. She's actually going to hunt with my crossbow, which is out of commission. Uh, she was target shooting it and it flew apart and thank God I was beside of her because it hit me instead of her. But, uh, you know, and when that broke, I was like, I've got to find her something because she wants to go hunting. So immediately, Facebook market, compound bows. Because I asked her, I said, do you want a compound bow or do you want, you know, another crossbow? Because I was going to buy her either one that she, had, she wanted. Um, and she told me she wanted... A compound bow so I found this one and I had to end up driving like an hour and a half to get this uh, I got a really good deal on it it come with a case and everything I've got a bow hanger in my closet that or not my closet in my bedroom that I hang our bows on um, so they're not hardly ever in the case unless we're going deer hunting and just transporting them it's a really nice bow I like it a lot she's pulling about between uh, 40 and 45, I think she's about 43. So it's real easy to pull back. So like this this bow, if I was shooting it, I'd have it cranked all the way up. She is shooting a, it's a Carbon Express arrow with the um, aftermarket fletchings on it. I think it's called a Lafini. Dangerous, I don't know, it's some kind of Spanish word. But this is what she is shooting. It is a 30-5 uh, arrow. It don't say the size of it like mine do. But uh, that's the arrow she's shooting. Um, she's not got to connect with anything on this thing. With this thing, I should say. Uh, but target-wise, she's got it down pat, and it's just a matter of time of the right deer coming in at the right place in the right time, and she will put one down with this bow. Um, everybody asks me that knows what she hunts with. Does the pink not kill the deer, you know, make them see her a whole lot easier and all that? The encounters we had last year, they didn't pay no mind to it. What they paid more attention to was her standing up in the deer stand, and that was it. Um, but this year she's going to be in a better spot. That way they're not going to be looking straight at her from the corn pile. They're going to have to really crank their necks hard to see her. Uh, but in our experiences so far, the pink has not stood out whatsoever to the deer. Uh, we'll move on to my bow. Now, a little history on my bow. I've had this bow since I was a freshman in high school. Now, granted, I have never hunted with this bow until last year. I've had probably 10 bows. 
arrows since then, and I never found one that shot like that one and felt like it did in my hands when I was shooting it. I've had a Diamond, I've had PSC, I've had Matthews, and, you know, my Matthews, I was pretty good with, but I just, you know, I couldn't do nothing with it. I just, I couldn't be accurate, I couldn't be consistent, and a lot of people, you know, you hear them talk about guns and bows, getting the top of the line because of all the ratings and all that, in my opinion, find the one that suits you the best and not go off what everybody else thinks. But, having said that, there is perks and advantages of getting the top of the line stuff. Um, 100%, I've shot a Matthews no cam. If I get another bow, I will get one of those. My first shot with a Matthews no cam was 45 yards, and I was stacking them on top of each other. I love the feel of them. Once you get them back, there's, you're not holding nothing back. My bow has a 75% let off, uh, somewhere right in there. It might be 80. Uh, Jenna's bow's got a 85% let off, so when she starts pulling, she's pulling her whole weight. But once she gets it anchored back, it's over with. She don't have to hold a whole 40 to 45 pounds back. She's just holding whatever 80, 80% or 85% let off of that is. I can't remember what that number is. I think it's like uh, about um, 15 pounds or something like that. It's nothing major. Uh, my math ain't really good today. I've been cutting hay. So. But I'll grab this bow and I'll show you, show you a little bit about it. It's a bear encounter. 2013 model. It is a shorter compound bow than what a lot of people see, um, a lot of people use. But I like that because when I'm up in a deer stand and I don't have a lot of room to draw back and all that, I don't have to worry about hitting my cams or anything on it. I've actually still got the sticker that tells me everything on it, which everything's rubbed off of it. So, of course, you know, you can't see nothing on it. Um, on here, I do have a one-pin sight. How this works is you loosen a bolt on this side right here. Let me get this quiver out of the way. So, on my sight, you loosen this bolt right here, and it slides up and down. And then you mark this for 20, 30, 40, 60, 80, all the way up to 100, or however far you want to shoot. You mark this, and then you put, there's a little pin right here. You can't really see it good in the camera, but there's a pin, and... You put that pin where you want it at. Um, it's a Triple H. Yeah, Triple H sight. I bought it off a buddy of mine. I like it a lot. I do have a, my rest is a drop away rest. So whenever I shoot, I'll have it up like this, and then when I shoot, it'll drop. It's an ultra rest. I like it a lot. Um, last year was the first year using it, so uh, I'm very pleased with it. I'm pulling about 55 to 60 pounds in this bow, shooting a true fire release. Um, I love this bow a lot. We'll move on to my arrows. Uh, Arrow-wise, uh, my quiver is an Apex Gear quiver. I like it. It's real lightweight. It's got the quick disconnect and all that. Uh, my arrows, I am shooting a... Uh, Primos Gold Tip is the brand. It's Gold Tip. It's a Primos uh, Special Edition 300 grain arrow with a 100 grain tip. I don't have any of my broadheads on because I've been shooting at the target. Uh, it's just got stock factory fletchings. It does have an Illuminoc that lights up blue. This one is actually... Let me find the one. This one. This one is the one I shot my deer with last year. I got it cleaned up really good. Um, you can kind of see a little bit left on the fletchings uh, in the right light. I don't know if you can tell on the, on the camera. Uh, it's got the Luminoc in it. This one, I think when I shot the deer, I messed up my insert at the end. Uh, because when I took my broadhead out of it, I really couldn't get nothing to screw back in it. Couldn't get a practice tip. I think I can get my broadhead to screw back in it, but I didn't try. Because I really wanted three arrows to shoot. Um, while practicing, but you know you can't you can't have everything you want. 
So, that's just a little bit of my arsenal that I have. I do have a crossbow, but I'm not going to drag it out for the simple fact of it is out of commission. So, I mean, I could never do a shooting video of it here anytime soon because I don't plan on getting it fixed for a, at least a little bit. Uh, but I hope y'all enjoyed this. Um, please remember to like and subscribe. And at the end of this video, there will be a picture of a deer that my aunt took a picture of. Uh, but let me know in the comments what you think about the deer. Uh, let me know in the comments uh, if you've got a bow, what kind of bow. If you've got a gun, what kind of gun. Uh, just leave me a little comment. Make sure you like and subscribe. Turn on the post notifications. And I will catch y'all on the next one.